and three, two, one. You never know where a good idea is gonna come from. Good ideas are like a mouse in your house. You know he's there, <laughs> you don't know when you're gonna see him or where it's gonna be. So you just set lots of traps and just be patient. We are the artistic directors of Palabolus. Renee Jaworski. And Matt Kent. Palabolus started in 1971 up at Dartmouth. It was started by four men who had no dance training. It's a dance company, traditionally. We make things with our bodies, and that can go from dances to being part of theatrical productions to what a lot of people see online, our shadow work. As the artistic directors, we're trying to bring the group together around a shared vision. One of the great things about having a partner is that while one of us is totally in the moment, the other person is going like, huh. Or what should we do next? Or like already kind of in that editing process. The performers, like their job is to just be interested in everything. Sometimes you have to like kind of rein people in. Right. Because they're going to just keep... Generating. Yeah. You have to go, wait, no, do that. That's the one. Let's work on that. A lot of people identify Palabolus with the idea that when you brought Palabolus dancers together, you couldn't tell where one body started and the other one started. With Shadow, it's sort of the same thing. You're just overlapping them in the shadow and you don't know where one's head is and where one's butt is. So it's the same type of physicality, just exploded. When we started working with shadows, we didn't really know what the rules were. So you're playing with this new medium and slowly discovering these very simple rules. When, when you move closer to the light source, you get bigger. If you move towards the screen, you get smaller. We have a cone of light that we call, that's the cone that's made from the light that shines out. How do you come in and out of that cone was a big part of the discussion. We um, also started to realize that um, we could use not just our bodies, but cloth and props, and we can make things look 3D when they're not really 3D. So the more we played in it, the more the rules started to open up, and we had more of a vocabulary to work within. To see the human bodies first, and then see the image click in, is magical. We found that if we shortcut that, then some of the magic gets lost. There is a sense of three moments. Getting into place is usually a roll in. We have coronas just prior to the creation and a corona is something that sprays outward before it comes together to create the composite image. Then we have the composite image. And then the roll out at the end. The seven principles of mm -hmm. creating shadows. One of them is to understand what is flat, depending on where you are. In fact, in order to make people look straight, sometimes they have to be in a kind of weird position. If you look at the flower, the guy that's at the top, he's leaning back so that he can match everybody else. You can shorten or lengthen a body part by moving it slightly toward the screen or slightly away from the screen. We use clothes that have stretched to them so that we can expand and create bellies and stuff like that. As you get closer to the projector, your image gets larger and larger. As you get closer to the screen, your image gets smaller and smaller. So if you bring two people from the center and they start to move apart, you can give the illusion that one is growing or one is shrinking. composite shapes, there's a whole other kind of dance of choreography that happens on the other side. There are times that literally people are in a shape and they're and your final job and you're in some weird thing is to take your hand and go, <laughs> because you're covering some tiny little pinprick of light that's ruining it. Two, one, base.
the amount of teamwork that the dancers and the performers have. If there's one person who's not paying attention, the whole thing, the whole can, thing come can come crashing down. Everybody has to pay attention and sort of be watching each other's back. We need tea. Yeah, no. The, the, the person who's doing the head can make the tea. What about this? I, I think we can do it with fingers. Well, let's go. Head and then we just have hands. Oh. <laughs> just the hair. Right. It's the hair. It's the hair. Zach, you gotta be bigger with the eyeball. Yeah, I'll give those arms to go. Yeah, I'm gonna be some arms. Can we like blab blab that one? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Party arms. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Alright, here we go. Opening up to the left, to the right, forward, crazy! <laughs> and close it's out. And come out. <laughs> Who's next? Oh wow! I think we just made a mistake. Nice dome with like a flat top and like these two little. We need three mags so we can. Tubes that come out. Let's focus on the head because that's the identifier. Limitations are awesome for creativity. They are super helpful because if the world is your oyster, then it's really hard to make a decision. But when there are limitations, there are rules, and you work within those rules, and suddenly you have to be creative to sort of bend those rules and push the boundaries of what is possible in that world. When we're tackling a new idea or a challenge, we don't have one person who's directing the group. Our ideas come from all the peripheral, and as they coalesce into the center, that's when they start to merge, and that's when you start to see what it actually is. The information isn't always at the beginning. The information sometimes is all the way at the end, and that informs the rest of the piece, or it's somewhere in the middle, or it's like in this little moment that doesn't even end up in the piece, but somehow it informed what we were doing. Sometimes we'll be putting something together and it's just not clicking. We'll look at it and we'll be like, yes, that sort of looks like an elephant, but there's a defining element that's missing and we can't figure out what that is. And sometimes it's the way the thing moves. Sometimes it's a very specific detail. detail. It's like the eating of the hay, like when, when the elephant eats. It's not really necessary, but like just to watch the trunk feed the mouth and then that hey, just disappears. It makes you feel like it's got a throat, like it went somewhere. I think it's about being agile and responding in real time to what's happening in the room and what's happening with the performers that you're working with. Recognizing when an idea is working and when it's not and being able to 
change course. Yeah. That's, that's the agility part of it. And it's kind of like maddening yeah. sometimes because you're kind of like bouncing from this like crazy optimism to like, that's never gonna work, to this is it. You also have to, to be willing to fail. That's our guard against mediocrity. It's fun to be able to bring delight. Most of the time you're not enjoying what you're doing and what you have to do on the day to day. So to be able to enjoy it and to allow other people to enjoy it and invite other people to enjoy it is very special. You know, without the audience, we're just in a barn making cool stuff. And they're like the last collaborators for us. They're the thing that makes it click. We need them to make it be a Pablo show. Hi, I'm David Kwong, and I'm gonna show you how to make a crossword puzzle. Puzzles are all around us. There are problems everywhere, but a good puzzle makes the solver feel smart. As an enigmatist, somebody who performs puzzles, I am presenting them to you. I am challenging your brain, getting you to think outside the box, and hopefully have that aha moment when you can feel smart. <laughs>